Right, so I think everybody's pretty familiar with the basics of memory management in Godot. You add stuff to the scene tree, and then we call queue free. How do you know that you're not leaking memory? Well, in Godot, we have this monitor, and it tells us our, our memory, static, dynamic. More importantly, it tells you the object and node count. So you can see here we have 106 nodes, because I've added 106 sprites. And I'm going to click queue free on the big green square. And remember, in case you forget, you only have to call queue free on the parent, and then all its children will be free. So let's call queue free, and we have five nodes now. Okay, no memory leaked. Okay, this time, we're going to try create a memory leak. So I'm going to call remove child on the green parent. Now let's look at our monitors here. Okay, now we have orphan nodes. So you might be thinking, ah, that's why I know there's a memory leak. Orphan nodes? No, because if I now change the scene, we'll reload the scene, orphan nodes have gone to zero. Why? Because if we look at the code for remove child here, this button, what I was doing was I was taking into a variable the node green square. I was removing it. And then when we exited the tree, when I changed the scene that was, we're going to free it. And that's why it got rid of the orphan nodes. So orphan nodes are not bad. It's just a debugger trying to be helpful. But if I were to delete this code here, delete this line here, now, when we run the program, we go to our monitors, click remove child. We have now 101 orphan nodes. And when I reload the scene, we still have 101 orphan nodes. And you can see here, we're leaking memory. And we call it a leak because we can't free this memory. Like, it's impossible. There's no way to find these objects and free them now. It's just gone. The program is corrupt forever until we restart the program. So maybe we're sitting there saying, well, I use QFree, so I don't have memory leaks. Well, there's a lot of way to leak memory in Godot. Here's a pretty advanced example. I have this class called actor and it extends reference and it has one member friend. And remember, references are those magic objects that are supposed to free themselves. And how they do that is actually just under the hood. It just keeps a little integer going up and down as you copy it. And when the integer goes down, that means there's no more copies of it and it just deletes itself. That mechanism is great, but it has a flaw. So I'm gonna create this guy called Homer and this guy called Lenny. When I create Homer, Homer is a new reference, a new actor, and he has a ref count of one. So under the hood here, there's an integer, there's a number saying there is one of Homer. And then we're gonna create Lenny and the same thing. Under the hood, it's gonna say there is one Lenny. Next, I'm gonna say Homer's friend is Lenny. And that's going to increase Lenny's ref count to two. So under the hood, now Lenny says, oh, there's two of me. And then we do the same thing for Homer. So now Homer's ref count is two. Once we get here, Homer goes out of scope. Homer's ref count goes down one because he's going out of scope. So Godot says, oh, there's one less of you. So that leaves us now with Homer's ref count being one and Lenny's ref count being two. So then next up, Lenny goes out of scope. Now Lenny's ref count goes down by one. So now we're left with Lenny's ref count is one and Homer's ref count is one. And now we've leaked these guys who no longer have access to them. So that's a pretty nasty memory leak. And we can see that our objects are just going up and up and up and up. So to fix this, it's really easy. We just wrap Lenny in weak ref and Homer in weak ref. And what this does is it just tells Godot, this is a reference, but don't actually increase its count. So after using weak ref, this would be the flow. We would end up with zero ref counts. And you can see here, we are not leaking objects. So I'm showing you this example, not to say, oh, this is a memory leak you have to look out for. What I'm saying is that there's tons of ways to leak memory. So just be careful and always look at your object monitors. So that was a made up example, right? But let's look at a real world example. This morning, I discovered that in the in-game editor of uh, Spacebound at the game I'm making, that there's a memory leak. And how did I know that? Well, if we go to my monitors, we can see here that the main menu, which I kind of consider the stable state, I always know that it has at this many objects in it. Exactly this many objects, I should say, right? Except this object count here. This goes to 1209, but that's that's fine. And I know why that, that one extra object is there. And I went into the editor. We're going to add a gun. And then we're going to quit. And the object counts didn't go back down to normal because resources should have been 127. Objects should have been 1,209. So I'm leaking, not nodes, but I know that I'm leaking an object or a reference. So identifying you have memory leaks is super easy to do. Just these monitors don't go back down. So how do I find the memory leak though? Because there's like a thousand lines of code between the main menu and the action of adding that gun. So do I have to check every single line? Uh, no. And um, what we can do is we can binary search the stack. If you think about it like this, okay, when we launch the main menu till time where we add the gun, a bunch of functions get called and we can see that in the call stack in our debugger. So if I'm to go to the editor script and I go to add entity, which I know is the function that adds the gun and I go over to my editor, we're gonna add a gun. And now we see in our call stack, we have these functions, right? There's probably a few hundred lines of code and all these functions, but I don't wanna check all of them. What I wanna do instead is I wanna jump halfway so I'm gonna check halfway down the stack. So that would be, let's say, uh, paint. And in this function, I'm then gonna, again, halfway, just divide it in two. I'm just gonna abort, just do an early return like this. So what I'm saying is jump halfway, then just don't run any of this code. Make sure that it doesn't happen. 
And then we're going to see, do we have the memory leak after this is run? Because that way we've actually cut off half of the code we need to check, right? I'm going to add this gun. It didn't add, right? Because I deleted all that code. I uncommented all that. I commented out all that code, excuse me. Now let's check our memory counters and it's fine. So I know that the line must be after this, which is great, right? That means here I've eliminated like half of the code that I need to check. I didn't have to check every single line. And then we just repeat that, right? Just a binary search. And then we jump halfway again. Now that's what you would do if you had a lot of code. But thing is, I just saw a glimpse of the code there, but I know exactly what I've done wrong. Remember when I said that there's that one extra object that I don't have to worry about? That's the problem. So I guess I've, I've taught myself and you uh, a lesson here, which is that if there's ever a part of the code, you think, oh, no, 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 there's no memory leaks in that. No way. That's the super smart part that I wrote. Um, it's most likely where it is. So what's happening is that in my code, we have an undo, but it's an object. When I add stuff, right, let's say I add these walls and then I hit control Z and then I hit control shift Z. It's redoing it and it's only able to redo it because I give the undo stack the object, a, a copy of it and say, oh, by the way, if I undo, add this thing back in. And because it's an object and not a reference or a node, I was forgetting to free it on exit tree. So all I have to do to fix this is go to my editor and on exit tree, we don't actually want to free the undo stack. You can free the undo stack. It's a weird object. But what we can do is call clear history. So let's check if that fixes it. We go to our monitors. We have 1209 objects, 127 resources. We're going to add this gun. We're going to call quit. And we have the same amount of objects. Awesome. Yeah, so that's memory leaks in Gitto. And if you want to support me, please wish this my game is Space Bandit. A link to the Steam page is in the description.